Okay. Alright, people. We are going to talk about those of you who still here. Because I'm sure my last video put some people in their fucking feelings. And they might not be rocking over here anymore. But for those who stick with me. I promised that I was going to do have and have nots um, last weekend, this weekend. That's what I'm down here to do. And that's what we finna talk about. We're gonna talk about the have and have nots. Due to the fact that a lot happened last week, didn't much happen this week. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna start now. If I feel like it's going too long, then I will turn around and upload this one and then just do episode three separately. But for right now, we are talking about the haves and the have-nots. It's season four, episode two. Okay, that's one last week. Now, y'all know last week, Jeffrey and uh, Candace had them kill poor little Quincy Sr., right? Now, they done argued and stuff. Jeffrey done, done freaked out and, and had a, you know, you know, he done had a privileged white woman moment and everything else. Running up and down the stairwells. He ended up in the shower with Candace and everything else. Ty, he just had issues, okay? And, um, Rosie the nosy neighbor crossed the road. They called her son, who's a cop, to come knock on Candace's door and, uh, ask her about removing a vehicle that was parked in front of her house, okay? Um, she got, she finally got Jeffrey to calm down, you know, she was able to get the keys off of Quincy, because though it was his car, so she got the keys off of his, um, off his body, and, uh, she ca calmed Jeffrey enough to where he could go out there and try to remove the car, although he is struggling, you know, he's struggling with the shift, well, when he get out there, because apparently this car is a stick and not an automatic, and Jeffrey can't drive a stick. So after making a, a scene, trying to get this car to move, he, he's able to get it to move, child. And he rolled on on down the roadway there now. The cop is already feeling like something ain't right about Jeffrey because he probably smelled the alcohol on his breath. He saw him struggling with the um with the vehicle and he's asking Candace, you know, girl, is he alright? You know, is you know what's going on with him? Well, she trying to tell him that, you know, he alright, his mama just caught him in the bed with her her man or some some mess like this she said I don't know y'all get me together down in them comments y'all know how y'all do it and um the cop you know she was flirting with the cops and basically he realized that she was trying to stall him from going to chase Jeffrey um and so that's what she did you know he, he finally got away from her child and she went on back in our house he's suspicious but you know right now it's nothing but a suspicion now Benny find the finds Hannah at the motel, and he begging her to come on to the house. Uh, she allowing her dislike for her daughter and her pride to keep her from being able to take the cue and moving back to some comfortability, you know. She ain't trying to go back over there now. He done told her, look, mom, I done, been, I done found out that the tow yard and the house, um, the the uh the tow yard in the house are paid in full and Hannah of course has to give him what she always do which is that mouth and she talking about you know how did he find out from his whore whore lawyer whorish lawyer but it as well that he know what he talking about now let's go down to the uh jail and Catherine is sitting there and she's starting to place things together. She remembering a time where Wyatt had came back from camp after that priest had messed with him and he was he was really angry and cutting out the act of the food, pretty much like how he did when he came home from jail. And as she's placed putting these things together, you can see Veronica sitting over there looking kind of scared because Veronica know that what really went down with Wyatt. She knows she the one that set that boy up to get raped in the jailhouse, right? But uh, Catherine is saying that if if Jim allowed anything to happen to her baby, um, that you know he gon he gon pay for what he did to her child. If she found out anything that went on, then it's on. Now you got Veronica trying to tell her that you know Jim probably ain't had nothing to do with that. He got a lot on his mind, and that made Catherine look at Veronica like, hold up, hold up, trick, hold up, since when you been a crusader for my husband? And Veronica basically don't have an answer for this. She's just trying to keep Catherine from thinking about it. But Catherine reminded her of something. Remember, my daddy and how ruthless he is, I'm his daughter. And uh, if I find out that anything happened to my son, um, trust and believe, it's going to be on and popping. Because uh, 
Just like that priest disappeared, other, others will disappear as well. And Veronica looking worried. And as she should, because she know that Jim ain't had nothing to do with that part. She did, okay? Now, let's go over to the cry house. And uh, Wyatt is over there enjoying himself dancing and waiting on company, honey. When Jeffrey happens to pull over to this convenience store. And he calls him on a payphone. Y'all ain't seen a payphone in, in forever. But he found a fucking payphone. Sorry about the cussing. It, it might pop out. I'm, you know... Don't trip. God ain't through with me yet. I said I was going to try to get through these haves and have-nots with as little to no cussing as possible. So, considering that I'm trying, child, just, you know, don't trip. God ain't through with me yet. Every now and again, something might jump out, but it ain't going to be too much, okay? All right. Now, down at the payphone, he done called him, and basically, why I kind of dogging him out saying he can't come over there? Uh... Asking him as he been drinking, which we know he did have a drink at the house, and Jeff ain't a drinker, so he drunk, okay? But why is say, I mean, uh, he tell him he can't come over there, and Jeffrey like, yeah, well, anyway, I'm on my way over there. And as he get ready to try to pull out of the convenience store, he driving all crazy, which drew the attention of the law officer who had came behind him from the neighborhood Candace lady uh, live in to pull him over and tell him he taking him to jail for a DWI child. It was a mess, a whole mess. I understand. Uh-oh. Child, my stuff ain't acting right. Now, I understand Jeffrey's scared, but child, you, you got some Veronica in you, and that's just ruthless. I don't understand why you having such a hard time with this. Jeffrey really getting on my nerve because as much as his mama has done and as much as he went through and see in the last season, you would think by now Jeffrey could handle himself. You would think he'd have some, you know, some kind of balls about himself, but this boy weak. Baby, he, this boy, this boy is weak as sweet water, I swear yeah. Anyway, he about to go to jail. Now, let's go back down there to the jailhouse. Because we got Miss D.A. girl, Miss Wannabe County. And she has taken David out of the cell with Jim. Jim already knew what time it was. She finna try to make you turn on me. Well, David ain't trying to hit it. And he really ain't trying to go talk to Miss D.A. girl. But she insists. So, he gone into the little interrogation room to the over, over uh, across the way there. And immediately, when she he gets in there, she gets to trying to proposition him to turn evidence on Jim. And he she can get him out of this situation. She offered him immunity. Well, of course, you know he's not going to take it unless she offering something for Veronica. Old girl say, you know, I'm T.O.P. I don't like that bitch. Her words, not mine. When he tell her, look, child, I don't know what to tell you because unless you talking about adding my wife into anything, anything you talking about is null and void. Whole girl took the opportunity to try to go for what she know. She straddles him and tries to kiss on him and tell him she still got feelings for him because if you recall, season one, this girl had a relationship with David prior to him getting with Veronica and she been stealing her feelings all this time, child, okay? But David ain't trying to have that. He telling her, babe, get on, you know, get your legs on off off me. Because they ain't the one, they ain't the set of legs I like wrapped around me. So I'm going to need you going on and get that on off me, girl. Going on with that mess because I ain't trying to hear you, okay? Well, uh, David gets her to get off of him. And she tell him he loyal to her fault. But she is tearing up and she telling him, but she hate that she going to have to do it to him. But she going to do it. So, Basically, she finna try to take him down too because he wasn't willing to give it up and get back with her, okay? Well, David go back to that uh cell with Jim and Jim is like, why the fact that you still come, did the fact that you came back in here let me know that you didn't turn no evidence. And David is like, no, because we friends. And that's when Jim said friends. And their relationship... It ain't it ain't nothing. It ain't they not really friends. David may be his friend, but it's clear to us all in this episode that that, that Jim has no alliances. He don't care nothing about David. He don't care nothing about him at all. Okay? So we see that. But he gonna tell this man that he'll call off his hit if he if he's if he prove well if he promised to punish his wife. Now, Jim that's a grown ass man dealing with a grown ass woman. You can't tell this man I'll call off my what I got going on towards your wife if you allow, you know, if you deal with her. But he told him I'm gonna deal with my wife as I see fit to deal with my wife. Okay? And that's how he left it. Then we see Quincy's sister, she looking for him and nobody seen him. 
Finally, back over at Candace's house, we see Quincy reaching over for her leg, and she's standing there. And it's at that point, I'm like, okay, now see, Tyler, 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 this ain't the play. This is the, this the damn soap opera. I'm going to need you to keep it believable, okay? Now, this man done been dead for eight plus hours, and all of a sudden now, he's able to move his body, and he's over here trying to reach out to Candace and get her attention. I, I don't understand child but that that's where that episode ended off i like i said i don't understand why i don't understand why i don't understand why at all and i'm at 10 32 so i'm gonna keep on moving i i didn't get that now we at season four episode three and to me this was a filler episode because i got nothing out of it and i'm like okay i know you're not gonna be able to give it to us all at once but come on tyler at least keep us on edge per episode to keep my interest because you tried it boo you really tried it we start off with Quincy. He alive, y'all. And he, you know, he reaching out to Candace, telling her to call for help for him. Call an ambulance. And I'm thinking in my mind, dude, you got to be out your mind because why would she help you? But he telling her, I mean, you, you act like you forgot that this woman know that you came here to kill her. And if it wasn't for the fact that, you know, first the white boy was on her. <clears throat> that stole her money, Oscar. Then you tried to get her, and him and her good girlfriend had to stab you down to get you out the way, okay? So now you're trying to bring up memories with her and have a sensitive do you remember moment. And she was like, yeah, I remember. I remember playing. I remember you beating me. And I'm calling. The, I'm asking you to call for an ambulance, and you wouldn't do it. I remember you pimping me out to your friends. I remember you uh, breaking my jaw. And she told him she wasn't going to help him at all. She was going to sit there and watch him die. And that's what she did. Now, he went on to telling her some myths about the baby would die if he don't have, get the medicine that he need. Now, Candace know there ain't no medicine, obviously. And if it is some medicine, it ain't nothing for her to make a phone call to down there to Benny. Benny get hold of Hannah and Hannah find out if this child got any medicine that he need. So she wasn't believing him with that either. Candace said that like I would. I love to watch a bitch expire. Okay? I really do. I like to watch somebody kill their own self. You know? With the mess that they have going on. Now, Let's go to this cop that done arrested Jeffrey. He pulls over for some unknown reason. Take Jeffrey out the car and starts asking him questions that he already know the answer to. Asking him, you know, why was he at Candace's house? Is, is she his girlfriend? Basically, like I said, things he already know is the answer. The answer to. What Jeffrey tell her now, you know, but he went, he whimpering like old girl, scared, talking about, no, it's not, he, that's his friend, not their girlfriend. And the cops say, I know you're not because she told me you gay. And then he goes into this, people like him make, pe you know, people like him hate people like, you know, people like him hate people like Jeffrey. And I'm like, okay, is this some homophobia type stuff going on? But then the dude started trying to fill Jeffrey up. Saying that, you know, he hate, it's like, I didn't get that. He, he saying he hate gay people, but then you trying to fill him up. And, Jeffrey, did you get excited, baby? Because the man said that you liked it. And, child, if you got excited in that moment, I know some. I know some if you allowed yourself to get excited in that moment. Well, he puts Jeffrey back in the squad car. And he tells him, because he get in the car, too, that he breaking a law. And he looking at Jeffrey Lips and stuff and asking him, you know, would, uh, would, it's against the law for Jeffrey to offer him fellatio uh, in, in lieu of not going to jail. And he acted like he was about to pull a pink panther out when the dispatcher came on saying, did he not just say he had Jeffrey Harrington? And he confirmed that he did. And she said, good, well, how long are you from, how, for how many minutes are you away from the station? Because the DA wants to speak with him. And that is what saved Jeffrey because old boy was about to pull a pink pants out and put Jeffrey lips to work because he was looking at him. And, and basically, that's what he saved him from being raped. And I don't think Jeffrey can handle rape because child right now, Jeffrey is acting like he is, child, he acting double stuff and soft. I ain't lying. I swear he is. Anyway, now we're going to go over there to Miss D.A. want to be counted, honey. And she talking with her girlfriend that's a jailer. And she talk, She tells her that Jeffrey is on his way in on a DUI. 
Well, Gigi and Ness wants the jailer to get three cells that together and put Veronica, Jeff, and David in, you know, separate cells. And I'm like, girl, you pushing it, aren't you? Are you not really just pushing this thing right now? Child, she told her that she don't want to lose her job. That's what jailer girl saying. And DA girl telling her, look, girl, everything going to be fine. Besides, I got you this job. Are you secure, okay? Well, the jailer tell her that she sent her an email about this press release because now... Maggie and Landon has released the press release and it's in the newspaper about Jim being the mastermind of all this mess that's been going on and Veronica is naming Veronica as an accomplice along with pictures of her in a rather compromising position with Benny, okay? She tell the old girl, the, the jailer, make sure that they get these newspapers. So old girl, she don't want to do it, but she gone on do it because she feel like she going to be all right. First person to get it was Catherine and Veronica. Veronica looking at it and she asking Cat, uh, I mean Catherine see it first asking Veronica, girl, you having an affair? She showed her miss. Veronica tried to amp up, but she brought it back down and told her, look, I will tell you about it later because there are ears inside of these walls. Okay, Jim gets the article first from over to David, but he showed it to David and David looked like he went into prayer and supplement. I ain't gonna lie to you, he looked like he couldn't believe it. Next, we see Miss D.A. girl, and she talking to this judge. Now, this judge obviously do not like Jim whatsoever, honey. He don't have, he don't see it for Jim. He don't see it for him. He called him a S.O.B. and everything else. Well, Miss D.A. girl wants the judge to sign off on them papers allowing Wyatt access to that $12 million inheritance that he got coming from the grandparents. The judge was somewhat apprehensive because of the you know, history with drugs and stuff, but old oh girl, Miss Dairy Girl is trying to convince him, telling him that, you know, if he don't get it, then he can't protect himself. You know, it's only a matter of time for his parents to get out of jail, and he feels that his life will be in danger. So, Miss Judge, Mr. Judge, this life for Jim is so strong, he's not going to do the right thing. He went ahead on and signed off on the papers, giving a crackhead $12 million, child. Okay, he went and did that. Now, let's go over to the crime mansion, and Wyatt is waiting on the pusher, baby, and the pusher arrives, and uh, Jeff ain't got no, I mean, Wyatt ain't got no money, honey. Wyatt trying to get him jewelry, then he offered him credit cards, to which he said yes to, but he gave him a small vial of Coke, right? Well, he got a bigger vial, and Jeffrey really, I mean, Wyatt really won't that. He know he got this money coming, and he trying to convince this man to do it. Oh, boy, like, look, if I don't get the payment, because this right here is $80,000. If I don't get the money for this, you did, and so am I, and I ain't taking that chance. Wyatt then convinced this dude here that he going to have this money, and it's all good. And he even invites him to partake in the, in the product himself. Now, this is why I say all the time, y'all, you cannot sell it and use it at the same time. This dude done forgot his job, right? He ain't he over here so excited because he just certain this boy gonna get this money. He done joined the the cocaine party and now I don't know why two cocaine you know, I don't understand why drug users can't ever do their stuff separate, you know, individually or together two of them at a time. They always gotta have a, a harem of people. They got a hair a harem of uh, drug addicts around them. So child he wants to call folks over and all of that and why it just wanna get high so bad he down with it. So child they done the cry mentioned into a cocaine central. Yes, they did. Yes, they truly did, child. I said, uh. Now, let's go over to the hotel, child, because Hannah over there. Now, Hannah is over there with Quincy, and he wasn't feeling too good. Well, Hannah needed to get an additional night over at the place, so she called down to the front desk, and old girl got an attitude, bad custom service is what I call it. And, um, Old girl answered and informed her that checkout is at 11 a.m., but if you want to spend an additional night, you have to come up with $67 dollars and some more change, child. And Hannah check her purse, and baby, she ain't got number $8 in her palm pilot in her pocketbook, baby. So now she going to need 58 and change to stay the night, and she offering to clean up, you know, her services and cleaning up, and old girl said they got all the help they need. So Hannah, Hannah got to figure out what she going to do. Because she counting on a paycheck that her, her boss is in jail, child. How you going to get paid? I don't know what she going to do. Well, she calls the social worker because she know that the social worker been looking for her. And the social worker has gone by a house. She know the house is in shambles. That it ain't nothing left. That child is, is burnt down. Points it just in the deal. So she telling her that she had a hotel. And of course, just like she told Candace, that ain't no fit environment for no child. 
But Hannah begged this woman to give her to 3 p.m. Monday to get this, you know, get a, a stable place to stay for her in the queue. The woman agrees to do so. Okay, I'm going to give you to Monday. At I'm calling you at 2.30. By 3, you ain't got nothing, girl. I'm going to have to go on and take the child because we can't have him in no dire situation. Now, at that point, the baby over there sweating like hell because, in my opinion, that medicine is probably dope. I, could, I wouldn't be surprised that... In that room with all those kids, when we seen little Q over there at the sister house, they feeding them kids dope. And this child is going through withdrawal. And I say that that is, I hope that he write this right because I want something really bad to happen to this sister. It, we quit, Q done already died, honey. Big Q done died. Finally, he done went on to meet Glory. But something need to happen to this sister, okay? Something need to happen to her. Now, she trying, she trying to, uh... Look for him and stuff, and they supposed to be going to get somebody named Dilo or Daylo or whoever to track the phone to find him out where he is because they can't find him. But this child is going through withdrawal. Somebody need to know something about that, and this needs to be written right. I hope it is because I, I just think that that's horrible. Now, let's go down to the tow yard child. Benny with his over-talking, and they say he look good, but you know, I told you. Light skin the problems, child. Light skin the problems. Cause he didn't call war down there to the tow yard wanting war to go straight and do the right thing because he got this business and he the only truck driver, so he needs some help. He called war. War like look, I'm a thug, nigga, nigga, I'm a thug. Bitch, I'm a thug, okay? So he don't want really wanna go legit. In comes Mitch. Now if y'all don't remember Mitch, Mitch is the man that he and Benny were originally trying to bid on this tow yard, but they ain't have enough moolah. And Mitch is in there because he done found out Benny got the business and he feeling like, well, why you ain't cut me in on the deal? You know I want to be a part of this. That's when Benny decides to let him know, I ain't buy this man. My sister bought this and she bought my house. Now, War listening. Remember, War is the person that helped her kidnap Jim and extort that money from Jim. And he putting, you know, he putting two and two together and he realizing, wait a minute, I ain't, she got more money than what she's saying because she able to do too much. Benny done told that the girl done bought the business out now and his house and her house. War now wants to know where in the hell is, where she stay at, baby. And Benny and ben and I realized, and I told you, light-skinned Cupid baby cute in the face and just dumb in the brain I tell you the truth he done told the dude cause he knows something ain't right so he going over there to holler at Candace and that's what the hell he does he goes over there to Candace and uh she tried to talk to him outside uh -uh, he don't want to talk to her on the outside he want to talk inside and grab it up around her throat area you know around that bitch let me get you together area right there where a man will grab you in and get you right and the only thing say her was the fact that she tripped over the Quincy body and more seen that they go a dead body is cute. And he like, what the hell going on? And that's pretty much where the episode let off. Y'all, he better pick this up. That's what I can say. He better pick this up because I can't see myself sitting through this. This is getting ridiculous. Finally, Quincy died. I'm glad he heard us last week. Well, I wasn't, I didn't do no review, but I was talking, you know, I was talking stuff. I, I hope that some justice is done in this here, this episode. I won't walk away from this. I won't see Veronica get hurt. I won't see Jeffrey man up for once in his life. I mean, dog, bruh, just because you gay don't mean you got to be weak. It's plenty of gay people out here that ain't weak at all, honey. And I'm friends with a lot of them, okay? So, I need him to do better. I'm going to need that sister to get her justice because I know she was a part of feeding them kids that dope. I'm going to need for uh Benny to learn how to shed his face. Child... He needs to just, you know what, if they can't do nothing with him no more than what they doing, they need to let, kid, let him be cute. Because he don't need to do nothing there. Anyway, I held y'all down here for 24 minutes. Almost in the meantime, in between time, please like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys back down here for the real world now on Friday. Peace. Oh, and for everybody that stuck around after my last video, thank you so much. I'm just... Right now, I'm in a crossroad where I'm not for the, for the fuck shit no more. And I haven't turned my back on being who the woman that I have been down here for the last 12 months. I'm just backing up and paying attention to what's the people that are in my life and the new people that are trying to come. 
I ain't gonna change on y'all. I'm just not here for the fuck shit, and that's all I have to say about it. Hope you understand where uh, where a bitch is coming from, cause I love y'all. I just wanted the love back without the drama. Peace.